Welcome to St. Augustine College, where we transform the lives of Latino through knowledge. My name is Reyes Gonzalez. I have the privilege and honor of being the president of this wonderful college. Today we have with us none other than Miguel Angel Valdivieso, who is joining us from the center of the world, from Ecuador. Before we get started with our very interesting topic, I would like to ask Miguel to tell us a little bit about his life journey. You will find that he has an extraordinary life story to tell us. Miguel, welcome to your home. Welcome to St. Augustine College. Once again, it is a pleasure to have you here. And started with our main topic. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you and Dr. Hill and Rafael for his technical assistance. It is for me a pleasure to be here to be part of this series. Um, yes, Chicago is my second home. And uh, so it, it, it is a pleasure, a special occasion for me to, to share some with you. I don't think I have a big story to tell. Mine is very similar to thousands of people that go to this day looking for a better future. I left Guayaquil when I was 17 and I arrived at a small industrial town north of Boston called Lawrence, Lawrence, Massachusetts. I did my junior, sophomore and junior years there. And since I did not have money to buy a car, I did all my everyday life was walking. I lived two blocks away from school and 10 blocks away from my working place, which was a hospital. And then at night when I left the hospital, I needed to walk about 20 blocks to find a Burger King place. So that was my meal. A double whopper with cheese, fries, and a larger strawberry. Then I moved to Chicago to go to school, to go to college there. And I think I was lucky to enter Northeastern, a small school in which I found excellent teachers, excellent friends. Teachers were demanding, but at the end of the day, whatever they did for us was to give us their best. Uh, I live and work in Chicago. And then I came back to Guayaquil and worked for RJ Reynolds company, a tobacco company that at the beginning, the job opening they had was in Quito. So I told my parents that uh, I had the job offer and my parents say, well, that's great. You can visit us now from Quito to Guayaquil. But two weeks before coming to, to Ecuador, the company called me and say, we have a small changes. The job will be in Guayaquil, not in Quito, Guayaquil. And they sent me a picture of the city. So, and they gave me a salary increase before even it started, I got a salary increase. They never asked me where I was coming from. All they wanted was someone graduating business or economics, bilingual, willing and able to travel. So a professor of mine, the one who gave me a hard time from first day at school, showed me that ad and said, Miguel, this is you. So I got the job, came here, and without having any prior labor experience, I faced a labor strike. It was difficult to handle the union, very strong union back in the 70s, and I did it okay. After a few years, I decided to go back to the state to get a master's degree. 
I anticipated that there was a need for MBAs, even though I enjoyed studying economics, but the market demanded MBA graduates. So a good friend of mine, Armando Triana, helped me to get into this program. My wife and I live on the north side of Chicago, near Northeastern, and the school was on the south side, Park Forest South. I drove two hours each way, five days a week. But that's it. I wanted to get a degree, and if it took me to drive two hours, well, that's what I need to do. I recall one night, I got to school about 7 p.m. The class ended at 10. But when I got out of the class, the amount of snow that fell on that night covered all the parking area. That night, winter of 78, I think it was, it took me four hours to get home. Mm. I got home about 2 a.m. We didn't have any cell phones, but that was about it. So in the summer of, I graduated in June of 78 with a master's on an MBA. And another friend of mine, Dr. Luis Salces, very dear friend, called me and said, Miguel, they're looking for a bilingual teacher. I have given your name. They will be calling you. So here it was a program, a bilingual program established in the heart of the Hispanic community, Ketze and Belmont. I began teaching at a college level in the fall of 1978. And I have not stopped doing that. I really enjoy teaching. So I have worked for Palmer's College, University of South Carolina, Brookdale Community College, and Universidad Espiritu Santo here in Guayaquil. That's about my summer of my life back in the States. Mm. What a beautiful story. Sorry. And it resonates very much with what uh, many of us that come to this country, and that is in search of a better life. And uh, here at San Agustin, we also focus on that and giving an opportunity to the many Latinos that come to this country in search of a better life. I, uh, I admire you for you know, all the work that you have done for start, getting started in, uh, in education, giving back to the many Latinos that need an, an opportunity. And also, it seems that uh, you as well as uh, I have a similar uh, a similar person that uh, made a difference in our lives. And that was a teacher, a faculty member that uh, in my case, that they saw um, perhaps something in me that, uh, and they helped me. And it sounds like you also had someone in your life that helped you uh, to become who you are today. And it seems that you have uh, continued that legacy and you have been fundamental and uh, very critical in the development de la Fundación de en Ecuador. Yeah, Fundación Ecuador. Yes. yes, indeed. I am very excited to hear about it. Tell us a little bit about its founding and your work and what actually led to you getting involved with uh, this really remarkable work that you're doing at Fundación Ecuador. Well, Fundación Ecuador is a non-for-profit organization, an NGO created by the Ecuadorian private sector. Okay, it was created on September 27, 1991. Yes, for celebrating 30 years of institutional life. All of our members come from the private sector. The board of directors are business people okay. who were funded by the USAID agency. They gave us the first step to take off. At the beginning, we were heavily on economic market concept. We want to 
promote free competition, pure competition. The need to have intellectual property rights observed in the market. In fact, we were the institution that helped design the blueprints of what is now the Ecuadorian Institute of Intellectual Property. Mm -hmm. We work heavily on promoting the country, creating business opportunities, bringing, inviting investors, foreign investors to come here to invest. Back in 1996, we produced a document with the technical assistance of some Chilean economists, the well-known Chicago boys. That document analyzed 12 areas, poverty, education, housing, international trade, public finance, et cetera. And we worked hard on this document and it was presented to the presidential candidates in 1996. There was another contribution of Fundación Ecuador telling this potential presidential candidate, here is the country. These are 12 critical areas that we have analyzed. And here are some proposals to solve those problems. In the same way, we had a TV program once a week, 30 minutes. And the, the idea, the goal of this program was to broadcast good news, innovative ideas to society. So we invite both public and private leaders to share with us their positive experience. It was, in, it was not possible to talk about sad news on that program. Everything has to be positive. That was the idea. So it, it, it was a, a well-accepted program. Mm -hmm. uh, what else about Fundación Ecuador? We believe our vision is to be a sustainable organization, a benchmark for the unity and sustainable development of Ecuador. An NGO that promotes the unity and development of the country sustainable and innovative projects. Mm -hmm. Our values are five, liberty, knowledge, solidarity, ethics, and commitment. There was a TV commercial that you bend yourself to help others. We do that. Our everyday activity is to help those that are being left behind. We work heavily on the low-income areas. Mm -hmm. Wonderful uh, uh, mission and certainly values. Uh, Miguel, tell me about the, uh, the implementation and how the legislators have adapted the 12 uh, critical solutions, let me say, to the, uh, uh, to the growth and the viability of Ecuador. Well... Like I say, that was back in 1995. Mm -hmm. Some of our recommendations were indeed uh, implemented. Uh, we were heavily on modernized the, the state, the law. Mm -hmm. um, we hire experts on intellectual property rights. A fellow from Washington, a fellow from Texas. And they came here we did some research, we interviewed a lot of people and came out with this proposal. That was, that was the mechanic that we used. Mm -hmm. Good, great. And, uh, yeah. you know, something else that was also uh, is very uh, interesting that you mentioned is about your focus on innovation. Uh, yeah. It is not something that uh, people speak a lot about, but I'm... Um, you know, it's been several years that you were thinking about it. So you must have been one of the first uh, 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 organizations in Latin America that was thinking about well, uh, innovative ways to help the less fortunate and those people that were being left behind. Yes. Back 
in 2002, Fundación Apolo was invited by the mayor of that time, Ayman Evo. Mm -hmm. He wanted us to develop something that will allow, that will bring knowledge to law income. So we contact companies specialized on distant learning, an Argentinian company. And we agreed that if they were hired, they were going to transfer their knowledge to local producers. The main objective of this program, which is known as Aprendamos, Let's Learn, is to provide solutions that we say back in the state, the stupidity free solution to everyday problems. Mm -hmm. So we began to search what were some of those problems affecting society. And we found out that there was a growing problem among teenagers, single mom. Okay. So the first course that we developed was a course called Early Childhood Development, Childhood Development. And the idea was to teach these young ladies what is the meaning of bringing a child into the world? The implicit, where can they go if they need assistance? What to do, when to do it, and so forth. So Aprendamos became the first educational by system mm -hmm. in Ecuador. Okay. Two years ago, I was invited by the University of Princeton to talk about up and down. Mm -hmm. And they could not believe the quality of program that we have developed here in Guayaquil at Fundacion Ecuador. So that was the first program. And then, as you all know, many cities especially cities in developing countries, base their economy on a small business. So we create a course for a small business man. We want informal businessmen to be part of the formal environment, to help them how to keep their accounting records, how to keep their business. They were salespeople. They knew mm -hmm. how to sell, but they need to know the management of whatever they would do. So that was one of the courses. So far and so on, in Aprendamos, we have produced 25 courses that cover eight areas, family, nutrition, uh, family, health, housing, language, computing, and business. Now, a unique thing of Aprendamo is that the program, without directly inviting others, others want to come and help Aprendamo. Mm -hmm. We invite the CEO of the local TV station to tell them about what we had in mind. To our surprise, all of them agreed to broadcast up and down on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So on Saturdays and Sunday, the two new chapters will come up on air, and then there will be reruns during the week. You might ask, how much did they charge? They did not charge the thing. And thanks to one of those TV stations, Aprendamos reach the Hispanic community of main cities in the state, like Chicago, Boston, New York, Miami. Okay. So they, they, they saw in Aprendamos a great opportunity to help others. Uh, as you know, there is a communication gap between parents and teenagers. Well, there's a course, families with teenagers, in which we emphasize how to handle those problems, mm -hmm. how to solve those 
difference between teenagers and parents. We also know that people age and somebody has to take care of them. Mm -hmm. We cannot ignore old people. So we came up with a course, a special care for elderly and vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. You know that when you are poor, you think of what can I do to make more money, to improve my life. And most of the time, people wanted to learn English. People believe that by learning English, they can earn more money, like a new, a new area for them. But we developed a course an English course. When the U.S. Embassy knew about it, they call us and offer us teacher, a specialized teacher, specialized writing English as a second language. So the second course was written by a specialized American teacher who came to Guayaquil and worked with us. And that's the impact of Africa. Yes. You know, a couple of things that that come to mind as I listen to your, you know, to the wonderful work that you're doing is many times the knowledge comes from the United States into our countries, into Latin America and other countries in the world or around the world, because it is believed that much of the knowledge is created here in the United States. But as we see, that is not the case. It was knowledge that is coming from Ecuador, from Latin America to the United States and programs being implemented, implemented here in the United States to solve the needs of Latinos and other organizations in the United States. Yes. Uh, yes. The, other, the other thing that's also very enlightening is that I believe that one of the, our biggest duties that we have as human beings is parenting. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting also is that at no at least from where I come from, it is not customary for us to receive courses or instruction or assistance on how to be a good parent. It is just hope in, uh, that throughout our life that we obtain that kind of knowledge and experience and values to be a good parent. Yes, yes. So it is also very enlightening that you came up with this idea of helping uh, our people to be good parents. Yes, yes, indeed. And in addition to that, you know, Guayaquil is to Ecuador what Chicago is for the US, you know. There is an area in Chicago called the Uptown area. It's a port of entry. Mm -hmm. It's an area where at least back in the 70s, 80s, newcomers will get there they will get daily jobs, and until they settle down, they will mm -hmm. live there. As a student, one of those demanding professors invited me to go there and teach at the Uptown Center, Northeastern Uptown Center. Mm -hmm. It was called Do Drop In. Well, Guayaquil attracts many people, but many of them do not know what it means to live in a city. So there is a course called Leadership for All mm -hmm. in which we tell them, hey, pray, the city provides you with all kinds of benefits, probably transportation, water, electricity, whatever. But you also have some duties that you have to learn. Like don't throw the garbage on the street respect your neighbor, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. It's amazing, one million, almost one million six hundred people directly registered in the 25 upper damos schools. One million six hundred people. They came Amazing. to our office, came to our office, registered, each course was free, was financed by Guayaquil municipality. Okay. 
And the mayor used to say, not because it's free, it has to be cheap. So our courses were highly developed. In fact, back in May of 2013, our English course was placed on the iTunes University platform. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It was the number one course for four months. We beat Harvard. Yes. Aprendamos course was there. That's wonderful. So, he speaks about the quality uh, of the program. Yes, yes. The team, the, the, the people responsible for it were for the men. The mm -hmm. uh, Marcia Gilbert, Pedro Aguayo, Luis Villacres. They were the mandate people. Mm -hmm. and part of our board, part of this Aprendamos team. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, que no se diga que solamente is... excelencia yeah. sucede en los Estados Unidos. Excelencia existe en todo Latinoamérica. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. Um, I told you about my demanding teacher, mm -hmm. Dr. Sheldon Russell. Mm -hmm. The fellow who did not allow me to take Spanish as a foreign language. Mm -hmm. It happened that he was my student advisor. So when he and I were plan, uh, making my, my plan, and I saw that the school required four years of foreign language, mm -hmm. I say, Dr. Rosten, I mean for Spanish. And he looked at me and said, over my dead body. <laughs> you have left your home to come all the way to the Windy City, uh -huh. not to get an easy A, not to improve a GPA. You have to work hard. Okay, so he gave us hard times for the four years of college. Hmm. When I told him that I was going to give a speech at Princeton four or five years ago, or maybe more, he asked, he told me, Miguel, give me the date and the room number. When I gave this speech, there is this old man in his mid 80s mm -hmm. on the first row. The demanding teacher was there. <laughs> so, yes, you, you can do, you can, if you do whatever you do, patience, love, without creating barriers where there's no barriers, you can accomplish that. Yes, uh, uh, I believe that, uh, as you do, that we need to uh, help our students to spread their wings and also so that they can grow because it's only through this uh, hard work will we be able to achieve and grow um, and make all of our dreams come true. But I also know that you started other programs uh, in La Fundacion uh, about providing books and yes. getting That's involved. Another, yes. Okay. So Aprendamos came of life on 2003. Mm -hmm. In 2005, Mayor Nebot said, you know, we need to improve quality of education on the kids in Guayaquil. Mm -hmm. We carry on the study with the technical assistant of Research Triangle Institute. And the outcome of that study showed that our kids were way below region average. So we now can search for the books, textbooks available in the market. We gather high quality specialists to help us in this election process. So we came with a program that provides free textbook, grammar, math, and science. Mm -hmm. Back in these days, I remember I used to receive the textbook on the first day of class, but at the end of the period, I have to return the book back to the teacher. The mayor say, no, nope, the books will be the kids book. Make sure that the kids have the books. They have to be high quality. 
So the program began to provide textbooks for elementary school kids in Guayaquil, public school. Mm. But not only that the kids received the textbook, teachers received training and the teacher received study guides. Well, that was never, never done before mm -hmm. in the world. So much that the Minister of Education called us. And he had a meeting with the mayor and asked the mayor, how much would it cost him to replicate the program? And Mr. Nepal said, this the investment is already made. All you have to do is pay for the printing of the program. Mm -hmm. So from 2006 up to date, all the kids in Ecuador received free textbook. But the One idea came out here in Guayaquil. In the yes. Yes. That is wonderful. So we have estimated this is a win to win situation. Teachers receive textbook. Now they feel that they have something of their own. You go to these school homes and they have the books there. So the teacher receives the textbook. I mean, the student receives the textbook. The teacher receives training. The parents save money. The annual estimated savings of this program. A conservative uh, amount is ten million dollars. That's the amount of money society is not spending on books. Sure. And you know you bring up uh, so many good points that are certainly innovative. Uh, you know we spoke about parenting, but now you also spoke about the training of faculty, uh, and I think that that is also very critical because I think that uh, we can each of us probably know some just very talented, intelligent, um, hardworking professionals, whether it be economists or historians or physicists. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they have the skills to teach. But you started also teaching faculty so that they would know how to teach our, uh, uh, the students. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Another very innovative uh, idea that uh, you started that is not commonly here, that we hear about it. Well, when the Minister of Education mm -hmm. decided to carry on with this program, mm -hmm. we distribute, Ecuador has two hemisphere, four regions, one NGO. Mm -hmm. uh, there is what they call the, the coast region. My schools go to school from May to January, more or less. And then the mountain region that starts school like in the States, September, December, all the way. So the first Part, the post region text would reach the students in the Galapagos. Teachers received the training in the Galapagos. They were surprised. Parents could not believe that their kids were holding textbooks on the first day of class. Nice. So that, that was the key. High quality textbook approved by the Board of Education, by the mm -hmm. Ministry of Education on the first day of class. Yes, that is really <laughs> remarkable. And, and I know also that you had some um, programs that were dedicated for the youth of the future. Yes. So yes. not only are you innovative, you're futuristic. <laughs> well, let, 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 let's, let's, let's discuss this. What happened if you, if you are a low-income high school graduate what do you do? You have your high school diploma. But you have to, to get some tools, to get some motivations to keep on going. But that program that you mentioned emphasized competition among high school students. Hear me out. The best high school graduate among public schools 
would receive a house. Yes. Wow. Uh, okay. Now, it is not a six bedroom apartment, a <laughs> house. No, no, no. <laughs> but a house, a decent house. Sure. To the first high school graduate. Then the program provides electronic equipment for those whose grades are below the first one, and then monthly pass. So all in all, every year, you have this competition. Let's say that you were uh, on 10th grade and you receive, because of your grade, you receive a computer. On the 11th grade, because of your grade, you receive another computer. Fine. But on the 12th, if you happen to be the number one student in your school, you receive it. It's remarkable. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know something? We, Fundación Ecuador, design the program, monitor the program, but who gave us the student's grade were the school principal. Mm. I can see it in, in your expressions how important this program is to you. Well, yes, because here is the, report, the result of an effort. It's a family effort. Okay, you go back home and your parents help you set up a nice studying mm -hmm. environment so that you can do well. And your teachers, the school principal, will say, you are the number one student mm -hmm. in my school. The program start provided all these benefits, and suddenly an academy that teaches mm -hmm. French say, we would like to chip in, and we want to provide free scholarship to those who want to learn French. That's great. I'm going to ask you a question that I think that each of us have our own perspectives, but I'd like to hear yours. Why is it important for us to help the less fortunate, the poor, the, the ones that do not have a voice? Why is it important to help them? Yes. Very simple. I am sure that you want to go to sleep and you want to wake up knowing that you have done your best. Mm -hmm. How can a person be happy if that person is surrounded by all negative externalities? When you walk down where you kill the low income areas and you see people begging, when they tell you that their roof is the sky, mm -hmm. that they sleep on the grass. Can be done. They have to give back to society what society has given. That's it. That, that is what really motivates us in Fundación mm -hmm. When we began the, the free textbook program, a lady came to the mayor and said, Mayor, now I can send my five kids to school. Because before that, she had to pick up one because she did not have the money to buy textbook and school supply for mm -hmm. all the other kids. Yes, so yes. That pays off. When, when the kids receive the, the, the computers, the, the laptop, I mean, now they have a, a tool mm -hmm. that can help them. Either to yes. enter college, to create their own business, to do something. Yes. You know, we started our conversation by you saying that you came to the United States in search of a better life. And I can attest ba on, um, based on what you're, I'm hearing from you that you are creating and helping the Ecuadorians for a better life at home without having to travel 4,000 miles. I would say, Fundación Ecuador, we're a small NGO, but all of us have the same behavior from the board president down to, yeah, we're here to help. We're here to guide, to extend our hand to those that are left behind. 
We really do that. And you're doing it very well. Um, I see the emblem of Fundacion right behind you. Yes. Three colors, three. Uh, can you tell me about it? There must be some very important significance. No, no, no. <laughs> this is what we call Flor de Lis, the Boy Scout. Okay. Yeah. And these are the colors of our flag. That's Yellow, wonderful. blue, and red. And right. it has been like that. 30 years ago, some people would say, why don't you modernize your, your, your name? Or, no, they like that. That's what it Love is. It away. Yes. You're going to celebrate your tradition and your studying. We have began the celebration today by oh. you inviting me to this series. Mm -hmm. I told the board members and say, we began our celebration today. That's great. great. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, the... It was uh, some of us, it was not until less a year or maybe a year and a half when COVID came around that we started thinking about digital education. But we were thinking about this even before some of us a ver, were, were thinking about right. it. Okay, Ecuador faced a financial crisis. I think it was about 2000. Many people that, many families that were. Many people left the country, okay? Many went to the US, many went to Europe. But part of the family remained here. Mm -hmm. All of our courses have been developed knowing what society needs. So we find out this problem. And Aprendamos step in and say, okay, let us create a course to teach how to contact through internet, how to get connected. And mm -hmm. we call it internet for all. Yes. Many people, adults, moms, grandparents, whoever, they register and they learn how to contact their families back in the States or Europe. And once they knew that, once they were more familiar, we developed a course to create business through digital, what we call digital computing. Futuristic. Well, that's what we try to do. Uh -huh. That's what we try to do. Yeah, yes. some of the words that I would use to describe, uh, uh, describe your organization, you and as a person as innovative, creative, futuristic, compassionate, and doing for others what others have done for you. Yes. Um, the, mm -hmm. Right now we're thinking, mm -hmm. we have worked with elementary school, high school kids. We have helped them to, if you finish high school, you have three options. Either you go on into college, you go work or you want to create your own small business. And that's fine, we have helped them. But now we're thinking of what happened to that segment from newborn to five. That's an area that we have to investigate. That's an area that we need to call on partners. Mm -hmm. to invest in that area and to teach nutrition, health, education, housing. You know, we have a, a mutual friend that his name is uh, Jose Sanchez that describes what you're describing as health equity, which in, in his mind involves obviously health, education, housing, addressing poverty and all of the needs of our of our society that you're describing as well. Yes, yes. We have began to think in that direction. We're knocking on doors, trying to obtain partners to help us do research and eventually come up with a pilot project. 
Yes, but I also uh, realize that this doesn't come without any a lot of work, and that you have also been working in providing scholarships for our stu for your students to continue their education. That's another program. We one night we asked, what happened to those kids who have lost father and mother or both? What happened to their education? Would the life end there? So we came up with this scholarship program. If you lost one of your parents, the reader will come to our office, register, and this program will guarantee full supply, monthly passes, and some financial aid until you graduate from high school. It is sad when you see these kids that they have lost their parents, but it's very rewarding knowing that you are helping them. Mm -hmm. 1,500 kids so far have benefited from that program, which began in 2012. That's wonderful. You know what? I we could certainly learn so much from the innovative solutions and initiatives that you have implemented in Ecuador. We need to make uh, implement some of those initiatives here in, in, in our great city. Uh, but before we come to the end of our program, I would like to uh, ask our audience if they have any questions from you. I know I have a few more, but I would like to give them an opportunity. So Rafael, do we have any, uh, uh, I'm extending an opportunity to our audience to ask uh, Miguel questions. Um, yeah. Uh, we have one question here. San Agustin College is expanding horizon overseas based on partnerships. We believe that Latin American countries and institutions have a lot to offer and great opportunities of exchanges. Why Fundación Ecuador could be a good partner for San Agustin College? Sure. Well, we welcome that idea. In fact, there is a small community college in Lincroft, New Year's. The name of this college is Brookdale Community College. It was the first community college with a foreign extension program here in Guayaquil. And as a Fundación Ecuador, we helped them to establish it. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, and as uh, perhaps uh, Dr. Gil Garcia might have mentioned to you, one of our initiatives is to pro uh, provide opportunities to students in Latin America for dual degrees or just participating in um, learning from the United States and we can learn from them as well. Exactly. In fact, that Brookdale program allow kids to go to Lincoln, New Jersey mm -hmm. and teachers from Lincoln to come here and local teachers to go there. It was a nice exchange program. Yes. We can learn so much from each other. Yes, indeed. Yes. Are there any other questions, Rafael? I want to ask Miguel, and what's next for the Fundacion? What's in the horizon? What other innovative uh, initiatives are you thinking about? Well, as I said, mm -hmm. we're beginning to think about that segment, mm -hmm. newborn to five. It's a new area that we're beginning to learn. Before closing, I would like to share with you that because of this education program, 4,600,000 people have been 4,600,000 people have benefit from this education program. It's huge. Yes, indeed. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, Rafael, any Thank other you. questions from the audience? No, no more questions, doctor. Mm -hmm. So we want to ask the audience if they want to send a question, they can put it in the chat, they can raise the hand, so I can ask the question to the panel. While we're waiting for uh, for question, Miguel, 
are there any other um, advice or that you may have for those of us that are away from our countries and uh, how we might be able to help our native countries or Latin America? For the students at St. Augustine, my advice would be to set goals and achieve those goals, regardless of the size of it. Uh, just work, work, and keep on working. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Don't give up. The right answer is just around the corner. Great advice. Great Thank advice. you. I will certainly keep that in mind and implement it myself. <laughs> adelante, siempre adelante. Y seguir Así trabajando. Es. Así es. ¿Verdad? Any other comments that may have uh, come up, uh, Rafael? No, that's all. <laughs> oh. Well, Miguel, I want to thank you. I have learned a great deal from you. You have inspired me. And we will continue to work. We will continue to seek excellence, high quality, and innovation in all that we do. We will follow your footsteps. And the next time you're in Chicago, please do not hesitate to re uh, visit your home. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you. Okay. Mil gracias. Bye -bye. Goodbye.